What are you covering up? I'm what are you hiding, my friend? Hello there, you awakening wonders. It's resignation season. Joe Biden has resigned mysteriously. We don't know where he is. We've not seen him resign. He's resigning as a disembodied voice echoing through presidential chambers and media hallways. And now Kimberly Cheetle has resigned after considerable and some might argue deserved pressure, even though it's very difficult to watch Kimberly Cheetle in these House hearings and not feel some sympathy, particularly not as someone who's been in a lot of trouble at school, for example, and who... What the hell were you doing? Now, obviously, it's a very serious issue, and she occupied, until recently, an extremely important position. But on the human level, oh, my God, poor Kimberly Cheetle, because she doesn't seem like she knows what she's doing. Either that or she is, as one of her inquirers suggested, withholding information and covering something up. What exactly is Kimberly Cheetle covering up? Why was Crooks able to fly a drone over the entire area the day of the rally and the day of his assassination attempt? To my knowledge, he did not fly the drone over the entire area. It wasn't the entire area. There were whole areas that that drone didn't get anywhere near. So, Marjorie Taylor Greene, why don't you get your facts right and say that the drone went over some of the area on the day that a former and potentially future president was due to give an open air speech? Hmm. How did he fly a drone over the area, period? Any part of the area? Again, I would have to go back and check the timeline of when that took place. What becomes slightly ridiculous now is the use of the word timeline. Timeline gets said so many times it starts to lose its meaning. And certainly, dear Kimberly Cheetle, for someone who's at a house hearing after an assassination attempt on Donald Trump, doesn't seem to have bought enough data. I mean, sometimes I don't feel like we've prepared correctly for our show, but, you know, no one's going to die as a result. And when the event- Why didn't you bring the timeline with you today to answer our questions? I don't have all of the answers on the timelines based on the criminal investigation. Were you not prepared today to answer our questions? That was the beginning of when I felt like, oh no, this is like school. This is high pressure school. Why weren't you prepared today? What the hell is wrong with you? Is there trouble at home? You're not getting on with some of the other Secret Service officers? I am prepared to answer the questions based on the information Uh, and wanted to be able to provide. Do you have a timeline that you, do you have a timeline at all? Do you even have a timeline? Now, I'm well aware that someone lost their life that day, and it is therefore, of course, an extremely serious issue. But the sloping roof, the ladder, the scoping the area out, there are so many inept and comedic components that Kimberly Cheetle's resignation seemed inevitable. But aren't you also getting this hastening sense of time sort of funneling into nowhere, this kind of insanity of hearing a president's disembodied voice talking to Kamala Harris, of seeing the head of the Secret Service resigning as if she's getting expelled from school? Isn't all of it becoming patently absurd? Do you have a timeline at all from from any of the day? I have a uh, timeline that does not have specifics. That's shocking. (laughs) That is absolutely unacceptable. That means you are a failure at your job. Oh, that's that's one of the bits where I felt like, whoa, this is getting a little bit too heavy now. Let's keep it friendly, shall we? We're only talking about, I suppose, the attempted assassination of a former and potentially future president at a time when America seems to be in an extraordinary crisis. It was obviously all over online spaces. What's still difficult to appreciate and understand is how is that little, thin, unwell, peculiar lad being able to get on top of that lethal, dangerous, slopey, slanty old roof without being apprehended, particularly as there were a large number of people shouting, "Uh, excuse me, there's a boy on the roof. I mean, when JFK lost his life, and we all know that that was a pretty extraordinary event, there weren't people going, who's this guy on the grassy knoll? And what the hell's going on in that bookstore? Why do Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby know each other? None of this stuff makes sense. Director Cheadle, as you know, the shooter began shooting at 6.11 p.m. Eastern on July 13th. NBC reported that at 5.51 p.m., 20 minutes before the shooting began, the state police informed the Secret Service of their concern. Now, the rally was not paused at that point, correct? No. And according to NBC, just two minutes later, at 5.53 p.m., the Secret Service notified its snipers about the gunman. The rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? No. Let me show you some video footage by rally goers. If you could play the video on the screen up here. 
This was taken two minutes before the shooting start. If you could turn up the volume. We have criminals. We have we have people that right there, right on the road. It's much tougher than it has now. It happens. Right on the road, we got up here. Ma'am, that doesn't look like suspicious behavior. That looks like threatening behavior to me. And the rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? I can tell you, as I stated earlier, sir, that the moment that the shift uh, surrounding the president were aware of an actual threat. That's a threat right there. The guy's on the roof and everybody's yelling at him. The drone was not a threat. The slopey roof was a threat, but to SS agents, the ladder was not a threat. The guy on the water tower, we don't even want to talk about that person. We don't want to talk about the moment where there was a vehicle driving through a fence and the various moments of ridiculous Keystone Cop-like chaos that unfolded on that day. It's difficult to maintain the reverence for the man who lost his life protecting his family, the respect for the many people that work in security forces that deserve to be honoured because of the sacrifices they make and for the high virtues and principles they follow. And also to be sympathetic towards Kimberly Cheetle, who's obviously a human being trying her best. I imagine her that morning getting ready for it. Right, I've got to go to that hearing today. What am I going to say? Oh, God, I hope they don't ask me about the shell casings. I hope they don't ask me about shell casings on the roof, because if there were three shell casings on the roof and we all heard nine shots go off, that means there was a second shooter and it's going to be exposed that something extraordinary is going on. And we're all going to have to confront the fact that this is potentially yet another time in American history where the deep state and other ulterior forces have cooperated in the taking out of a political opponent. Oh no, I'm probably going to take today off work actually. If you love our content, then by Jove and by the Lord above, you'll have to love our partners too. We choose them especially for you. Dr. Gundry is a world-renowned cardiologist. He tells us about a secret potential toxin in food that's causing digestive issues, affecting millions of us. It could be affecting you right now. Here's a warning sign. Have you gained any weight lately? Are you fatigued? Are you suffering from digestive discomfort? Are your joints stiff? Have you got any skin problems? Dr. Gundry explains how these side effects are often mistaken for ordinary signs of aging. You just gotta know which foods are healthy and which contain this hidden toxin. We've got to find out about this toxin. Click on the link in the description here. Go to gutcleanseprotocol.com. That's gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash brand. Gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash brand. We'll learn about this toxin. We'll learn about which foods to avoid and how to avoid this toxin in order to get fit. After years of research, Dr. Gundry, I salute you, sir, has released this free video showcasing exactly which foods you've got to avoid. I'm going to have to avoid these ones. I don't want bad skin. These joints have got to remain limber and lubricated, baby. So go find that video, gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash brand to learn about these hidden toxins in our food. We got to get healthy. We got to get well. Let's go back to the content. Click on that link now. I want you to stay healthy and age beautifully. Yes. And, and directing the officer's attention to him. The rally was not paused at that point, correct? We are currently still combing through communications and when communications were passed. Well, I can point you to this communication as two minutes before the shots started ringing out. Director Cheadle, yes or no? Was there ever a moment where the Secret Service actually considered pausing the rally? The Secret Service would have paused the rally had they known or been so the answer is no. was an actual threat. The answer is no, correct? I can, I can speak to you in generalities. No, no, I don't want I generalities, don't I want specifics. The, communications the answer were... is no, you did not consider pausing the rally, correct? The people that are in charge of protecting the president on that day would never bring the former president out if there was a threat that had been identified. Well, they did because we've now identified three points in the, in the 20 minutes before the shooting that the threat emerged. But it is Representative Lisa McLean, who, like her namesake John in Die Hard, has the ferocity and tenacity to take on Kimberly Cheetle in a way that even the hardest of hearts would struggle not to shed a tear for. Here she is, her last day, her last moments as head of the Secret Service, a position that was presumably pretty difficult to attain. And whatever extraordinary plots are subsequently revealed, whatever we subsequently 
currently discover about the nature of the deep state, globalism, corporatism, how real power operates, the resignation of Joe Biden, whether or not there are dark forces at work when it comes to both political parties. On a human level, I would not want to be grilled by Representative Lisa McLean because she ain't playing. You keep referring to the FBI. When asked how many shell casings were on the roof, you referred to the FBI. When asked if there were explosives in the car, you referred to the FBI. When asked if Crooks was acting alone, you referred to the FBI. See a common theme here? I can go on and on. My question is, who at the FBI should I speak with? Wait for it. Wait for it. I mean, that's actually now become pantomime. It's become cartoonish. It's become baroque and mocking and ridiculous to watch poor Kimberly Cheetle confronted in this way. I know some of you are saying, I don't feel any sympathy for her. There was an attempt made on Donald Trump's life. If he had not turned his head, he would be dead right now. And what could be more significant than us having an explicit understanding of the number of shell casings on that roof, which some people said was like hosed down much too early. It's another one of those things you hear around conspiracy theories. Forgive me using the phrase. If there are only three shell casings up there and we all heard nine shots, uh uh-oh, now we're in a serious situation. And I remember right when this happened, saying, you will hear corners of the media and corners of the internet talking about false flags and conspiracy theories. But when it was pandemic o'clock, we're like, don't be so ridiculous. Follow the science. Well, now they are entertaining conspiracy theories. I think that the Trump campaign set this damn thing up. And then it's like, hey, what's going on with Joe Biden? Why haven't we seen him? Don't be a conspiracy theorist. This is the problem of living in a world without virtue, without principle, without any sort of guiding light or morality, is that people just vacillate around around according to whatever set of principles are valuable to them at that particular time. And if you are consistently anti-establishment and consistently anti-authority and consistently pro-liberty, then curiously, you're one of the people, certainly in my case, who find yourself in their crosshairs as if us being continually against the establishment, continually cynical is the problem. It's a crazy world, kids. But Lisa McLean, she got this. The FBI is responsible for the criminal. Is there a name? I'm not certain. I'm not certain. Who at All right, here we go. I'm not certain. I don't know. Let me ask a different question. Have you been in ca- communication with the FBI? Yes, I have. With whom? I speak with the director and the deputy director. Okay. And what have they shared with you about this investigation? So I'll give you an, an, an opportunity to answer again. Did they share with you how many shell casings were on the roof? They have shared with me the Did they collect- share with you how many shell casing were on the roof? Try and think in your own life the last time someone used that cadence when they were addressing you. It's my personal goal to never have to be spoken to like that again in this voice. How many shell casings were there on the roof? Right, so you know, are you going to tell us? I can't tell you, not without unraveling the very fabric upon which democracy, I don't mean democracy is an electoral process, but democracy is a set of institutions that have plainly become corrupted and hypocritical and operate at the behest of powerful interests. I can't tell you about the shell casings without all of this falling apart, and I've already actually done a deal. I'm out of here, baby. Imagine how Kimberly feels now. That woman must be rocketing to another dimension of pure relief and relaxation. What's she going to do as as her next job is she gonna like work at a water park she's gonna have a very relaxing future that woman is gonna eschew i would say pressure going forward for some time yes uh, okay how many were there i, I would refer to the fbi for how the many were there and their information that they need to share in their investigation so they've shared the information with you you just wa- don't want to share the information with us correct We have concurrent investigations that are going on. So they have shared this information with you. You know the answer to the question. You just refuse to answer the question from the member of Congress who has subpoenaed you to be here. Is there a different answer to that question? And yet you still do not have your PE kit with you. How many times do we have to tell you? And yes, I told you to be home at 11, and it is now a quarter after midnight. How many more times do I have to tell you? Something about this entire process extremely triggering but what a journey it's been from the moment of hearing that Trump was shot at to the extraordinary lapses in security the odd details the appearance in a black rock commercial for God's sake the media trying to frame it a number of ways did you see Joy Reid say well you know Joe Biden he's getting over COVID and isn't that in a sense better than you know Trump just wearing that tiny little funny little ear bandage that isn't in a way the machine itself can't cope 
with the volume of data traveling through it. I think any minute now, the entire thing is going to burst open. It's going to, we're going to be told extraterrestrials are in charge. I mean, where does this lead? I was always willing to come here and testify before this oversight hearing. Beautiful. Then let's do that. that let's let's for once have your actions match your words. I mean, that's actually now an assessment of her whole nature. So you've been in the in in communication with the FBI. You know the answers and you refuse to tell us the answers. So I will ask you again. You know how many shell casings were on that roof. What is the answer to that question? I think it's pertinent. What to talk is the answer to that question? I mean, actually, thinking about it, a resignation is not really sufficient, is it? Because if there has been conspiracy, if the reason that we don't know about the number of shell cases on that slopey roof, it's so slopey up here, how can we even look? Ah! But if the reason is because there was a second shooter, then what you can extrapolate from that is so desperate, as always, whether you're looking at 9-11 or the pandemic or the assassination of, the J of JFK, sooner or later, you're confronted with this immutable and difficult edifice of corruption of like, oh no, we're being lied to so extensively power is so corrupt that we're going to have to radically evaluate and alter not only the trajectory of America but the whole way that our institutions globally interlock and interface with one another this is much worse than any of us thought it's not enough that Kimberly Shield goes well okay let someone else run this bloody organisation I'm exhausted anyway you're still not getting the reckoning that's required think of the times you've seen Anthony Fauci pilloried by Rand Paul or by by Marjorie Taylor Greene that they do seem to bring out for these kind of occasions. What's happened? Has there been, a? do you think, a proper assessment of whether it's excess deaths or adverse events or the efficacy of lockdowns or the origin of the virus? It, what we are living in, indeed, is a post-truth time. And that was always something that was attributed to Trump. That was a Trump problem. But Actually, it's not, is it? It's an institutional, bureaucratic problem that happens when you have technology with this power and capacity, media that's this immersive, and bureaucracies that are this powerful. Do any of us really believe that we're going to get told, yeah, this was a deep state operation, same as JFK, same as Donald Trump. That's not going to happen, is it? People are going to go to their graves with this information, and some of them will be going to their graves quite quickly. I think it's pertinent to talk to you about the information that the Secret Service has and that the Secret Service knows related I'm to the I'm asking you an day. answer to the question. If you're supposed to be in charge, if the buck stops with you, how come you can't share the answers? What are you covering up? I'm what are you hiding, my friend? What are you covering up? In short, isn't that what this comes down to? And so many of our modern political conversations, what is being covered up? What are we not being told here? Why are they investigating this issue and not investigating that one? Why is this story being amplified and this story being ignored? Why are these riots being reported on and these riots not being reported on? Why are these people being heralded as heroes and these ones being condemned as villains? Why is it that in broad daylight, a figure as high profile as Donald Trump could be shot at by an anemic looking villain calf kid who'd once done a video for Black Rock who can manage somehow to get on a slopey roof that's inaccessible to some of the finest, best trained individuals that America has ever produced. It doesn't make sense. If indeed this is a simulation, it's glitching fast. What is being covered up? It's obviously corruption. It's obviously hypocrisy. It's obviously a need for radical change. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. Remember, we stream our show every day on Rumble at these times. Give us a like, subscribe, but more important than any of that, if you can, stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.